Hello and welcome to Cooks and Cars, episode number nine. I'm Rob D'Amico alongside Adam Merlin from the Merlin Auto Group. And we are on episode number nine. I can't believe it. And our subscribers are up to 10 people. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I was hoping to say 10,000, but we'll get there one day. All you got to do is help us spread the word. And if you have any trouble, go to cooksandcars.com where you can interact with us through our Facebook and our Facebook. YouTube pages as well. We do appreciate everybody who uh, joins us every Saturday at 10 a.m. And we got a packed show today. So I'm going to talk about the guests we got coming on and um, who's coming on a little bit later because we do have to uh, make this about a 45 minute show today because our producer is doing some uh, other stuff as well this week. He's a very busy man. Uh, so we have Shannon Morgan who's going to be joining us, aka Big Green Egg Foodie from the Big Green Egg uh, Team Green. Uh, We appreciate uh, her coming on. She's going to be talking about the wok cooking. So that's going to be great. Ricky Taylor is going to be joining us, driver of the number 10 for today's Rolex 24. And we also have Juan Pablo Montoya. He's going to be joining us. He's the driver of the number 60 Acura as well in today's Rolex 24. But right now, we're going to bring on our guest. It is uh, Shannon Morgan, a.k.a. uh, Big Green Egg Foodie, talking wok cooking today. And everybody's like, wok on a Big Green Egg? How do you do that? Right. Good morning. Thanks for having me on, guys. Um, I think once I started cooking on the Big Green Egg, the wok was the natural progression for me. Um, If you don't know, I'm actually a vegetarian. Uh, I do cook meat for my husband, so I cook both on the grill. Um, But the wok was just such a great way to introduce cooking vegetables and just expanded what I could do on the Big Green Egg. So when you're cooking on the wok, I, I want you to explain a couple things to me. How, what is your setup for the big green egg? How are you setting that up and what are you doing with that? So I take the base from the two piece expander. So you've got the base that you can put your, um, your um, convector in, but you're going to not use the convector. You're just gonna use the base and then the wok sets right inside of it. It cradles it. So it's quite simple. Um, I get the wok to temperature about between 350, 400 degrees for the grill. And then once you start wok cooking, you're actually gonna close the draft door either all the way or almost all the way. Because when you have the wok, the the lid is open, your grill is getting plenty of oxygen. So you don't need to keep the base open. Otherwise you are gonna be having a six, 700 degree wok before you know it, so. Yeah, and talk about you know, making sure you have the gloves on as well, because that is so important because there will be some flames from time to time. And what you need to do if that happens is help shut the dome for a little bit, and that helps. So talk about that and why you should do that. Um, I always, when I'm grilling, have at least one of my two hot gloves with me because if something does happen, I want to have those easily accessible because it's just too easy to think about grabbing something hot, um, and you don't want to do that with your bare hands. So I always keep them there like you said, just for in case of emergency. And I did have a wok flare up one time when I squirt oil, I wasn't paying attention. I think I squirted oil on the edge of the wok, maybe too close to the side and it did catch fire. Luckily I had no food. And like you said, I just closed the dome down within a minute or two, the fire was out and I carried on with my cooking. I'm pretty good at creating a fire in my egg. (laughs) (laughs) If we were gonna have an episode on how to do that, I'm pretty good at that. (laughs) <laughs> I could have done one of those last night. I uh, I burped the egg, but I guess I didn't let it go long enough because it was a big whoosh coming out. Yeah, I mean, it's one that got really, you know, with the egg, it, it really requires patience, which is something that I wasn't necessarily blessed with. <laughs> and I think that the more patient you are when it comes to trying to cook on the egg, the better off you are, no matter what it is that you cook. Well, the nice thing with the wok cooking is it is really quick. So you don't have to have a lot of patience. You can just go in there, have everything prepped, throw your meat in, throw your veggies in, sauce, and it is a very quick cook. From How did you get into cooking it with the, with the wok on the egg? I mean, I, you know, like, there's so many, you know, like I, yeah, to me, you know, I thought the egg was a grill. And then I come to find out like, people are making their breakfast on the egg. They're making pizza on the egg. You know, now uh-huh. you're cooking with a wok on the egg. Like, I mean, is it, you know, ha, ha, like, ha, how did you even get into doing that? Um, well, I started walk with the big green egg, started cooking on it, loving everything I was doing, but was looking for other options because I am vegetarian. Um, I cook some meat for my husband. I needed options for me. And I think what turned me on so much to big green egg cooking was how versatile this grill is. I was talking with some people yesterday and like you, 
they felt that this was just a smoker and just a grill. It was great for ribs and pulled pork and steak, but you can really cook anything on a big green egg. And that's, I think what my page is my biggest focus is how many things you can cook that aren't just slabs of meat. While it's great at that, you can do everything. And I cook mainly my entire meals on the egg. And the wok was just a natural progression. It just gave me another way to prepare something other than just grilled meats and other grilled vegetables. And so we're talking to Shannon Morgan, AKA Big Green Egg Foodie. And uh, you've been with uh, uh, Team uh, BG, Team Green for a while now, and we appreciate you being there. Um, but how did you get started with an egg? I know you do, I think it's real estate on the, you know, as a day job. And then you got into the barbecue side of it and, um, you know, wok cooking's picked up for you. You really uh, taken the ball and uh, ran with that. But uh, how did you get started you know, using your bigger egg? Um, well, I actually, I'm in insurance, close, real estate insurance. Sorry, yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> okay. um, I'm a graduate of Leadership Collier, which in our community is just a leadership program. And they are one of the beneficiaries of the, uh, we have a Big Green Egg Fest here in Bonita Springs once a year, sponsored by Sunshine Ace Hardware. And they were looking for chefs to represent Leadership Collier. I volunteered jokingly saying I would do it if I could cook vegetarian food on the egg. Mind you, I've never cooked on a big green egg before this. I really hadn't even cooked much on a grill. And I jokingly said that and they said, yeah, we'd love to have you do that. And I was like, oh crap, what did I just get myself into? <laughs> Whoops. Um, yeah, so my first time ever cooking on an egg was at Egg Fest. I have to say when the rep came around to fire up the egg, I was so relieved because I'm like, I'm kind of like, I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Um, so at that one, I cooked mini carrot hot dogs. Yep, little hot dogs. And you should have seen the people at Egg Fest coming around going, wait a minute, what are you cooking? And I'm like, carrot hot dogs. And most of the people really enjoyed them. Some people seemed apprehensive. And I'm like, it's just a carrot. What's, I mean, it's not, it's not some kind of something gross. It's just a carrot. But um, it went over really well. And by the end of the day, it was hot, sweaty. I was exhausted, was absolutely in love with big green egg cooking and got my egg the next week. Carrot first, hot yeah. dog, like, like to grilled carrot in a hot dog bun, I guess. Or yeah, what I makes did. it a hot dog? <laughs> the mustard and relish. <laughs> um, well, you actually marinate them. You cook them a little bit ahead of time. You boil them so they're slightly softer. And then you marinate them in a bunch of seasoning. So it does have that smoky flavor that you would get. And then wow. add that to the big green egg. They're pretty good. But like you said, a lot of what the hot dog tastes like is the ketchup, the mustard. And we did a chili cheese sauce on it. And it was a vegetarian chili. So oh, wow. there were a lot of flavors going on there. So uh, talk about one of your favorite recipes that you do on your walk. Uh, gosh, every time I, so I do a All lot of, of walk live. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I do a lot of live cooks and I've invited a lot of Instagram um, chefs and just home cooks to join me. And every time I do a walk cook with them, I'll do their recipe with them live. So if anybody's watching, you want to walk cook with me, send me a message on Instagram. I'll be happy to do a live with you or send me your recipe and I'll cook it for you. Oh, that's but awesome. And I guarantee you the guy next to me is going to be uh, asking. I got to buy a walk first. I don't yeah. <laughs> do y'all, do y'all have like you know, a big green egg yeah, walk? Absolutely. Oh, how did I not get that? <laughs> I don't know. You, we got to take another trip through the store over here. Jeez. Yeah, I think, I think you know who to talk to, to get one. I thought, uh, look, I thought I bought every accessory available. And there's always something more, but get your walk. We'll do a, we'll do a walk live one day with you. Um, but back to the recipe. So every single time someone sends me their recipe to do live, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be good. And then I eat it and I go, I think this might be better than the last recipe. So there's so many options. And I think, um, Rob, I sent you kind of a generic email, like a, a recipe of just kind of where to starting point, because it is so versatile. You can cook pork on it, chicken, you can do tofu, you can do no protein on your, on your wok cooks. <laughs> I swear I'm coming, I'm going to cook tofu for you. I made Captain Ron eat tofu. Did you really? Survived. Yes. Yeah, all right. All yes. right. 
Um, I think I'm just yeah, scared of it. I don't know. It's it, just one look, of those things. You know, it's interesting. I have to be honest. Like my wife does not love meat, and you know, everything we cook on the egg is obviously meat. So I think that this could really be a good alternative, so that we, you know, I mean, cooking on the egg is like an event in my house. You know, there's literally nothing to do on Sundays anymore, so we right. hang out and. Like it's a great activity to cook on the egg, but you know, me and my oldest son are really the only ones that will eat anything that comes off the egg. Yeah. So this could be a really great alternative oh. to. Yeah, you need to check out my page after this and take your wife there and have her just kind of go through and she can pick out like, it's like a menu and she could point out and say like, hey, look yeah. at this, I wanna eat yeah. that. Because that's what my friends do when I come to visit them. They pull up my Instagram page. <laughs> yeah. Cook and this. it's like their menu. And they're like, can you make this, this, and this? I'm like, I can't do four things. Um, so yeah, so that recipe I sent you, Rob, and anybody who's needing some pointers and where to start, it's kind of a very generic recipe because you can put in whatever vegetables you want, clean out the fridge. If you have half a pepper left, chop it up and put it in there. You don't have to have a ton of one thing. You can just kind of throw stuff in there that needs to get used up. Yeah. Pick the flavor combinations. Um, it's a soy sauce based, um, seasoning, but you can add peanut butter to it to make it a peanut butter. You can add rice. You can add noodles. Hey, I got a great question here. It comes from uh, Big Paul on the grill. We all know him. Yeah. Uh, how do you care for your wok in between cooks uh, uh, is what the question is here. So uh, how do you care for your wok? That is a great question. I actually have a video on my page talking about that. Treat your wok like you do your cast iron pans. So when I'm done cooking, I wash it just with hot water and use a scrub. Um, I have a scrubby, a chain mail scrubber, scrub it off and then dry it. That's the most important thing. Dry it. Do not just leave it on your counter. If you leave it on your counter to air dry, you're going to wake up to having some rust spots on it. So dry it. And then I heat it over um, my stove or if your wok or if your grill is still hot, um, throw it back on the grill because that'll take off any additional moisture. And then I will... Most of the time, I will go ahead and add another layer of, I have some cast iron seasoning. I'll you put a quick layer of that on the inside and the out. And it's and then gorgeous. We got, uh, let's see, C-Mac Cooks, uh, says Shannon, the queen of the big green egg wok. That's a <laughs> nice compliment there. Hello, everyone. Good morning uh, from, it uh, looks like, Jerry. Uh, we appreciate Jerry coming on. And uh, uh, let's see here. I'm looking for another question. No, that's a good question right there. It's, your answer is not going to be liked by the Big Green Egg uh, leadership crew, but it's uh, can you use any walk or does it have to be the Big Green Egg branded walk? It has to be the Big Green Egg. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right answer. <laughs> well, because uh, honestly, most walks come with that wood handle right. and you can't have that on there. That the the, the big green egg wok literally is made with no handles. It's got two metal handles that you can grab again with the gloves, you know, right. be smart. Uh, the big green egg branded gloves. That's right, correct. Right. That's yes. correct. Yeah, yeah. That's right. 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 We got, we got right. everything, man. Come on. You know that. Right. Look, we're even sporting matching shirts today. That's yeah, right. You are. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't have any of the clothes, Rob. What's up with that? I'll get you some clothes. Okay. We'll go shopping All for right. you. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, before we head out, is there any, um, you know, tips, tricks, things like that when, when doing this? And I know you already mentioned the, you know, closing the draft door at the bottom, because that's, I think that's the real big one is because a lot of people don't understand, you know, you have that open, the more air it's going to get in there, the flames start coming up around the outside. So shut that down. You got plenty of oxygen that's getting in with the dome open, but anything else with the, when you're walk cooking? Um, make sure when you whatever oil you're using, you want to do a higher smoke point oil. I prefer canola and I put it in one of the squirt bottles, you know, like the old fashioned looking, the ketchup bottles. That's and right. That way it's much easier to control how much oil you're putting in and have everything prepped and ready to go. Like we talked about, wok cooking is very fast. You do not want to have your meat done and throw in some of your veggies and still have to cut up your onions. So I have everything cut up, prepared, kind of stacked into piles based on whether they're a firmer vegetable, because those are going to take a little longer to cook versus some softer vegetables. So have it ready, have all of your sauces ready, have everything ready to go. Because once you start wok cooking, you are done 10 to 12 minutes from the start of throwing your meat in there to yeah. scooping it out and plating it. So have it, have it ready to go. Here's another question real quick. Uh, it looks like Jerry again. Uh, how do I get rid of rust? So if somebody has the walk and they got rust on it, how do they take care of that? Um, I would just use some type of scrubby, like a uh, Brillo pad, something like that. One without, I have some that don't have the um, soap on them. 
just yeah. scrub it off. Um, then start to just reseason it like you would cast iron. Yeah, heat it up, oil it, the whole nine yards. Uh, yeah. One more. What temperature do you let your egg get to before shutting down the vent at the bottom? I get the egg to somewhere between 350 and 400 degrees before I start cooking. And then I don't shut the draft door until I actually start cooking. So I'll put the wok on at 350 to 400. Let it heat up for a few minutes. It doesn't take too long. And then when I open the dome to start cooking, that's when I shut the draft door down. Because now that the lid's going to be open, you're getting, like you said, you're getting plenty of oxygen just from the, from the dome lid being open that you don't need the bottom open to. Yeah. All right. So uh, if we have any guests on that want to uh, maybe cook alongside you on a live event, uh, how do they find you? Where are you at on Instagram, Facebook, all that great stuff? Um, Big Green Egg Foodie. You can see behind me maybe my logo. So it helps you find it a little easier. Um, reach out to me on uh, Instagram. I do a Facebook page, but I don't find Facebook as quite as uh, friendly <laughs> um, as far as their analytics go. So majority of my content is on Instagram message me. I would love to have you come on, join me for a walk cook. Um, if you have questions, I get a lot of people message me with questions. I will always answer everyone who messages me. If you don't want to cook live, you're too nervous to cook live with me, send me your recipe. I'll do it. I'll give you a shout out and share your recipe with the, with the rest of the world. That's pretty cool. Hey, and Shane. if you're looking for insurance, call her too. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One-stop shop. I love it. Exactly. Hey, yeah. Shannon, <laughs> thank you so much. We do appreciate your time today. And thank you very much for joining us today here on Cooks and Cars. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. I appreciate it. Have a great day. And oh, go, you need to go shopping now after this. Over <laughs> I know. We'll, we'll Don't take worry. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. All right, Shannon. Thank you. Hi. All right, well, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, we're going to have uh, Ricky Taylor going to be joining us uh, in the Rolex 24 that starts this afternoon, 24-hour race. So I can't wait for that if you love sports car racing as much as I do. This is real, Ray. This isn't I racing no, like we've been talking about for the past few weeks. This is like real, like get in the car, like real racing. 24-hour like endurance. crash and your car's broken. Yes, not that, like is, that is. Yeah, there's yeah, no reset cool, button. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, all right, so we'll take a break. We come back. We'll have uh, Ricky Taylor joining us and also Juan Pablo. Montoya as well. So stick around. It's Cooks and Cars. There's a place where fire and flavor are celebrated, where grilling traditions and new techniques are perfected. Here in Big Green Egg Country, you can grill it, roast it, smoke it, or bake it. It's the most versatile grill you'll ever own. Simple delight, easy to use, comes with a free lifetime warranty. Have it delivered to your door by a certified dealer in your community and start enjoying the ultimate cooking experience. Shop online for home delivery at BigGreenEgg.com. That's BigGreenEgg.com. Adam Merlin, president of Merlin Auto Group. And over the past 12 years, we've been successful at building our business with the undying focus of taking the pain points out of what normally is a miserable process, which is buying an automobile. And it was on this mindset that about two years ago, we launched our service department. Because let's face it, the only thing that's potentially negative about owning these exotics or ultra luxury cars is the fact that you have to service them, is the fact that they stand the chance of possibly breaking and you don't know what's wrong. It's the fear of the unknown that we as the consumer sometimes are really nervous about before we go and buy that Ferrari, before we go and buy that Aston Martin. And that's the reason we started Merlin Auto Group Service Department we went out and got factory trained certified technicians from Ferrari, Maserati, Bentley, Aston Martin, Rolls Royce, and Porsche to make sure that you had somebody that you can rely on to help you manage your automotive investment and make sure that the right things were getting fixed, they were getting fixed the right way by people who knew how to fix them and were willing to take the time, answer your questions, and make sure that you were satisfied and you understood what was going on. If you're looking for a shop where you can get an appointment easily, where we'll answer the phone, where you can talk to the technician, where we genuinely care about your problem and truly want to help you solve it and be your partner in your automotive ownership experience, you need to give us a chance here at Merlin Auto Group.
Welcome back to Cooks and Cars. Hi, I'm Rob D'Amico alongside Adam Merlin. Uh, follow us online, cooksandcars.com. And be sure to follow, uh, I'm sorry, subscribe to us on YouTube. That really does help out in getting the word out there. And if you're watching and listening today, you can interact on our Facebook pages, our Instagram, uh, I'm sorry, interact with the show on the Facebook page and YouTube, but you can also follow along with Instagram and Twitter as well. The, all the links, again, are at cooksandcars.com. We're kind of in a rush today because we've got a lot of guests to get to in a little bit of time. But right now, joining us on the phone is the driver of the number 10, Acura, uh, for Wayne Taylor Racing. Uh, who, by the way, he's back with his dad's team. Ricky Taylor joins us. Ricky, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for coming on with us. Hey, Rob. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, no problem. So uh, up early this morning, getting ready for the race. Uh, how do you prepare for this? Because this is a 24 hour race and I know you got other drivers with you. So you're in and out of the car all day, all night. There's, you know, day driving, night driving. What, how do you prepare to get ready for a race like this? Yeah, this year is actually a bit unique. Um, you, you caught me this, you're my first appointment of the day. Uh, <laughs> the main, uh, I think this is the latest uh, Rolex 24 start in history. I don't think there's ever been one that starts later than this. So starting at three 40 today, Obviously, ending at 3.40 the next day makes for a really long Sunday. And so everybody's trying to sleep in as much as possible. Uh, I've got Rossi, Rossi's bus next to me and Ellie next to him. And I think everybody's still sleeping. Uh, just, just Hey, you know what? Them. Why don't you go ahead and walk over there and see what they're yeah. doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see if somebody like pop out for breakfast every now and then. And, but yeah, everybody's just trying to push it back as much as possible. And um, I think for Philippe being European, it's actually kind of works out for him on, on the time zone. But for me, just going to wake up uh, slowly, um, just sit in the bus, try and rest as much as possible, uh, kind of load up on some food because my first time in the car is probably going to be only at sunset, probably like 530 or six o'clock tonight. So you'll go through the transition from, you know, sun till nighttime. What is that like? Because it, it really does affect uh, when you're driving out there, how, how, you know, you just see the lights coming up on you or vice versa. You're coming up on a car and you're faster than them, them and they get in a corner and it's dark out. You got to adjust to all that. Yeah. It's, it's always nice to do, uh, to do a stint in the day and then, and then do your night stint. Right. The day stint, you can kind of get your bearings and everything and get, get into the car and everything. But uh, just because it's such limited running on the Rolex 24 weekend, you get all your running really at the roar. And then it's also nice to do the transition. Instead of jumping straight into the pitch black, you get to kind of, you know, progress through it. But something that that's changed over the years is uh, ever since the one day Tona project, when, when they increased the, the front stretch stands, uh, the sun used to be right in your eyes on the front straight. And now actually it made it much better because the stands will block the block the sun from being right in your eyes. So you don't have to deal with that as much. Um, but yeah, I, so so for me, it's nice to, to get to see the progression into the dark. And then uh, the next guy will have to deal with um, just going straight in. So we're talking with uh, Ricky Taylor. It's cooks and cars and the cooks part. Uh, so what do you eat to prepare? Like last night you load up carbs. How you eat a lot of protein today? How, how does that work out? Yeah, last, last night we went for, um, the guys felt like steak, and uh, but we ended up, at, Outback was packed, so we went over to Bonefish and got some some fish and some, some healthy stuff and salad, and, and then today we'll, we'll start to load up on, uh, uh, you know, on some carbs and proteins and stuff, uh, but actually right before the weekend started, I had, um, I had Philippe and Alex over at the house, and we made pizzas on the big green eggs, so but my, the last meal oh, wow. on the egg was was pizzas and you know everybody seemed to seem to enjoy it i think alex's dad has an egg at home and yeah so so pizzas weren't a bad way to start the weekend yeah i think uh rossi does have an egg i'm not sure but i believe he does maybe it's the one that is dad's but i remember him getting one yeah he's he gotta get he elio one home. by the way i told you elio with winning the championship we'll get him an egg if he wants one yeah, I, I think I think you need to send him a cook as well. Someone to, someone to... <laughs> <laughs> makes it a lot easier. A little prima donna over there, maybe I don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> Actually, he's got he's got he's gotten into the cooking a little more because with the COVID restrictions, we can't have uh, people in the in the track as much. So yeah. the the attendance is so limited to get actually into the paddock. So he's been surviving on his own over there. He's he's been making himself salmon every night and. And oh, he doesn't wow. have anybody to cook for him in the track anymore. So he's, he's surviving, <laughs> but he's a, he's a good, he's a good little cook. He can handle the egg for sure. He'd love it. 
So, Rick, talk a little bit about your car. You've, you've driven a lot of different cars, and we're curious about this Acura that you're driving now. Tell us a little bit about that and, and how you feel about it. Yeah, um, I, I've driven all the all the constructors that are currently uh, make the base of all the LMP2 chassis, and uh, the Acura is based on the Orica chassis and designed for Europe and all the fast, really smooth tracks. Um, it was really a big learning curve coming to America where we race on tracks uh, that are fast and smooth like Watkins Glen, but then we go to places like Street Course at Long Beach or Street Course at uh, Belle Isle in Detroit and then Sebring, which is extremely bumpy. And so the unique thing about racing in America is the car has to be able to do it all. And it really took all three years of development with, with this car um, to suit the different uh, demands that we have in America. And now we've got a package that can really do it all. And when, everywhere we go, we know we have a shot to win. Um, but historically here in Daytona, the, the Cadillacs have been the car to beat. Um, I think our first shot out was probably our best chance with the Acura so far. Um, but we had a little issue in the night and, and weren't able to be there at the end. But um, this year, it seems like everybody's really closely matched. I think, uh, you know, we have, we have a good race car, I think, on an outright lap. Cadillacs still have us a little bit. Um, but the Acura does, does really well over the long run, and, and we've done a lot to improve the, the tire life and, and uh, drivability of the engine, which has been a big, a big point of development. We're talking to Ricky Taylor and Rob D'Amico alongside Adam okay. Merlin. It's Cooks and Cars. We're also going to bring on Juan Pablo Montoya, who also drives one of the Acuras. We're going to talk to him and have all three of you or all both you guys on with us. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to we we're going to be uh -oh. talking to all, uh oh Ricky's like oh boy. <laughs> and by the way, Ricky, uh, I got to tell you, Ricky is one of those guys uh, won the championship last year um, and has a great record back with his dad, which is kind of cool uh, and neat to see with him. So um, it'll be it'll be nice to see. Him, his dad, the family back together again and on the racetrack. So we're getting everything connected behind the scenes here. Ryan at the shop is uh, getting us connected. Uh, but while we're doing that, I know we can probably still hear Ricky. Ricky, um, what are your expectations here throughout the race? Because 24 hours and, it, and nowadays it used to be where a, a car would be um, well ahead of everybody. But now you guys are within seconds after 24 hours, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's no longer a game of, you know, save the brakes and save the clutch and save the gearbox or any of that. Um, it's, it's really a sprint all the way through. And having, um, having such a strong field, although there's, there's seven, seven cars in our class, doesn't sound like much, but the quality is so, so high. And everything, uh, you know, everything we're doing is basically to put the pressure on the others. If, uh, if anybody, you know, relaxes too much, it's going to become very, very easy to lose, you know, 10, 12 seconds. And, uh, all that track position, even though it's 24 hours, becomes really important at the end because um, more than likely with five classes of cars and, and so much going on, there's going to be yellows and, you know, there's always going to be that late race restart possibly. And you want to be, you know, want to be in with a shot, but also have the car in one piece to be able to go and fight, fight for the win. And Elio not, knows not to get too crazy going into the bus stop, right? He's got, he learned that lesson already, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, as you said, Elliot and I won the championship last year and coming from IndyCar, which was all sprint racing, um, he had to really, he's become an excellent sports car driver and uh, he wants the he wants to win a watch so badly and uh, he's prepared himself really, really well and he's, he's really turned himself from a fantastic IndyCar driver to a world class sports car driver over the last three years. So I think we have a really strong lineup. I think the problem is everybody has a really strong lineup. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be really tough. And Elliot knows what he has to do. All right, Ricky, we got uh, Juan Popple Montoya. He's joining us as well. Juan, welcome to the show, man. We appreciate you coming on. Get ready for the Rolex 24 and your Acura. Welcome to Cooks and Cars. Hey, how are you doing? We're doing, I thought we were doing pretty good. Um, what can I say? Uh, we want to really kick Ricky's ass today. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was coming. That's why I wanted to make sure I get both of you guys on so we get a nice little battle going. But listen, it's, it's 
for the same manufacturer. So that'd be great for, you know, you guys in the long run, you know, you know, you bring everything to the top cream rises to the top. So hopefully you guys can, uh, you know, battle it out there for the win. It'd be great to see. Uh, but Juan, I, I want to bring you on as well and talk about, we were just talking to Ricky, how he prepares. What are you doing right now to prepare to get ready for this race? And I know you're, you're again, we're probably the first ones uh, talking to you this morning, waking you up, but uh, how does that process go throughout the day? Uh, for me, I was actually laying in bed watching the movie Chips. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I am serious. Like, I, was, I just got out of the bed just to do this. I'm watching TV, and that's it. That's all we're doing. So talk about the new team you're with this year, uh, Meyer Shank Racing. Uh, what does that mean to you? I, you know, you're just doing the endurance races, so you're only racing the, I think it's six hours and above, correct? I'm doing the three long races, the 10, 12, and 24, the three long races. And, and it's been good. You know, it's, um, it's kind of weird because, you, you know, they have, you know, same as Ricky this year, they have four guys. And when there's four guys in the car, there's so little practice time. It's like you really don't get to drive the car at all. So it makes it very difficult. But I think we got a decent car. And the car, the, you know, the 10 car looked really strong, you know, at night on, on Thursday. So we'll see. You know, we have to wait and see. You know, I think probably Ricky would agree with me that the Cadillacs look very, very strong. So they're going to make our life very difficult. Yeah, he, he had mentioned that. Now, how hard is it with four different drivers that when you get in there to make sure that the car, the seat, the positioning, everything's set up for you? I mean, I, you know, I, I know, you know when I go get in my wife's car, it takes me 20 minutes just to set everything <laughs> back up for me. You know, you guys doing this race. How difficult is that process? It's pretty simple. We have what we call a seat insert, and it's basically a mold, the back mold of your or what you need or and the position you want to be in the car. And you know what I mean? The other guy gets their insert out, you put yours in, and you sit on it and you drive. That's it. It's not too complicated. We don't overthink it. We just get done with the program. And then we were talking about, obviously, this is cooks and cars. We want to talk about cooking a little bit. Would you eat to prepare for this type of race? Uh, did you go out somewhere? Did you make something at the house? And then what are you doing today before the race, before you get in there? Because that's one of those things we've seen these drivers where they get in and then right before the start, they're, you know, they're running to the grid because they had to go run and use the restroom. <laughs> Well, you do a lot of drinking. Uh, I use a product called Infinite Nutrition that is like custom made to you. Um, so I, I've met, you know, I know the people there for a while and they custom build the drinks for me, whether I'm doing, you know, a long endurance race or a short race and, and the products are different And you know, I normally use that and that's always been enough fuel for me for the races. And I tend to eat a little bit of pasta and chicken or stuff like that, a little bit of rice. Like I'm going to have rice and a Caesar salad with chicken for lunch. And then probably in the evening, probably a little bit of, I don't know, pasta or something. It's, it really depends how hungry you are. You know, it's weird with the start time being so late that, you know, you need a lot of time. You know what I mean? It's like the more you're going to get up and you've got all day of racing to go. Yeah, we're talking to Juan Pablo Montoya. We appreciate uh, you coming on with us this morning. I know it's a, a big day for you guys. Got the big 24-hour race coming up, and uh, we're, we're pretty excited to watch it as sports car fans and, and, and uh, car guys because this is one of those things where we get to see, you know, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, the Acuras, the Cadillacs, all these big-name cars out there racing on a track, and uh, it's got to be a lot of fun for you guys to get in there. So, Besides this and the endurance side, what else you got going on this year? Oh, I got the endurance, World Endurance Championship. That is the WEC. So those are six races. That is the World Championship of Endurance. And I have the Indy 500 with McLaren. So I'm pretty excited. You know, with the Arrow McLaren, they, they seem to have very strong cars. So I'm pretty excited to be racing with them and, and have a shot at the 500. Now, how different is it? I mean, I hate to talk about COVID too much, but, you know, given it's kind of the world we're living in right now, how different is it and how different is the is the lifestyle, the preparation, um, the lack of the crowds? I mean, does that really affect or, or are you just in a zone focusing on driving the best you can? Um, I think Daytona done a really good job this year. You know, last year was very lonely races this year. You know, like Tona, they've done a really nice job for, like, everybody's kind of keeping to themselves, but there's a bunch of people came to watch in their motorhomes and stuff. So, 
we will have a, a bit of a crowd that is really nice, but everybody, you know, it's nice. It's a little different because you see every motorhome and they're every like their family sitting together and like normally you see used to see a big pack of people and kind of crazy and now it's a little more isolated but they do a you know they're doing a nice job you know Speedway did a really nice job and and I think it's a nice way to open the season you know it's a lot of cars a lot more cars than normal and that's going to be a you know, curveball to everybody with the traffic and everything. Yeah, look, you know, I mean, we really admire. I mean, we know that it's, you know, it's it's a challenging sport anyway, and it's disruptive with the pandemic and all of that stuff. And, I, you know, we admire that, you know, you guys persevere through it and, and put on a good show for us that, you know, we're craving things to do and things to watch and things to look at. So, you know, I mean, all of the professional athletes out there, I, I think that, you know, it kind of goes unsaid, you know, but these guys are, you know, they're, they're going through a lot to try to put on the show. Hey, I know we got Ricky back on real quick and I want to ask Ricky, <clears throat> excuse me, Ricky, a question about uh, being back at your dad's team. You know, we, we, we joked, uh, we sent some texts earlier on when you first got back there, how quickly he had removed your name off of everything. <laughs> but when you got back, but now that you're back in there, you're back in the swing of things, it's got to be a lot easier to go to a team like that where you know, there are things that are recognizable, you know, the relationships are already there. You kind of know everybody. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it was really nice going back. Um, obviously, it was tough on my dad and tough on me at first to, to leave the family team. Um, and But it was a great opportunity for me to go away for a couple of years and, and experience something new. Um, and so jo Jordan was kind of the, um, the one family member left in the team. And so now coming back... It, I feel, uh, well, they were calling Jordan Ricky at, at first. Now it's now everybody's still calling me Jordan. And so I'm Jordan's brother again. I, I think I'm Jordan's brother in a lot of, a lot of instances. Wayne's son or Jordan's brother. So it, it feels like home again, for sure. So what'd you do for the last two Thanksgiving since you were kicked out of the family? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I, I feel lucky to have been, uh, been accepted back somehow. And then uh, you have uh, what's the what's the camaraderie amongst racers? Not to put you guys on the spot, you know, but I mean, both of you being out there, None. yeah, <laughs> right, right. I mean, you have people like slashing tires in the middle of the night, and you know, like sabotaging the other guy's uh, motorhome, or you know, well, what's that like? I think I think the IndyCar uh, guys are a bit... serious. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. go go go. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're talking over each other. No respect for anybody around here. <laughs> go ahead, Juan. You go ahead. Go ahead first. He's got to respect. He's got. He's got to respect the elders. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. No, honestly, it, it's been. We've been texting a lot with Ricky, talking about the cars because normally we used to run you know run the same cars together and you know share all the information and and now that's I think that's changed a bit. Um, and it, I think it's, it's kind of weird and, and it, it, I think if we, if they share more, I think it would be better, but you know, I'm sure every team owner and, you know, they have point of view, uh, but we'll see, you know, I think after this week, whoever runs better, the other team will go, Ooh, I think we need to share information. <laughs> 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 and Ricky, what about you? Yeah, it has been weird. Obviously, um, the four of us between Juan, Juan Elliot, uh, Dane, and I, we we built a good relationship together over the past three years. And and uh, you know, as much as we want to beat each other, we have a lot of respect for one another. And so throughout the weekend, we, we all know what each other can do. So we know like if the one car is faster than the other, maybe maybe they're doing something good. And and so we're we're constantly checking in with each other, like how's your car and how's your car. And, um, so it's been interesting because uh over the uh, over the course at, at Penske it was everybody was running the same stuff and it was completely open obviously and uh and you kind of had one way of doing things and uh now there's two whole new teams that have a different way of looking at looking at this car and have had some new ideas and things and I think I think the cars have gone in a little bit of a different direction and uh we'll find out if it was good or, or bad in the the next 24 hours but um, the, the relationship between the, the four of us has, has stayed, stayed positive so far. And we're, we're trying to, to keep each other sane a little bit, I think. Well, we're talking to Juan Pablo Montoya and Jordan's brother, Ricky. 
<laughs> but hey, guys, we are doing something pretty cool. We're going to be starting a uh, sports car. <laughs> We're going to be starting a sports car iRacing league. We'd love to have you guys jump in from time to time because it's going to be Big Green Egg guys, uh, Merlin Auto uh, clients, and uh, with some of our other sponsors going to be jumping in. Love to have you guys come in and do a little guest run with those guys. Um, so we appreciate if you guys could do that for us. Uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot. You can tell me no or text me and say, what are you, some kind of idiot? <laughs> <laughs> which you guys have done before but hey all good um we appreciate you guys coming on and best of luck today seriously guys uh we love watching this race it's always a great race and like you said it's a late start 340 uh and it'll end 340 on sunday as well so thank you very much for joining us uh real quick before we go juan where can they find you online and follow you on instagram and all that stuff my instagram i think it's jp monty two twitter jp montoya and so on and you know, I'm around. All right. Thank you, man. We do appreciate it. Best of luck. And then, Ricky, where can they find you? Uh, I think all of mine are Ricky Taylor. Jordansbrother.com. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, just, for, just follow at Jordan 10 Taylor and you'll hey. maybe find me there. At least it's not Fonzie's uncle. You could that's get right. that one. That's right. That's, hey, that's does, Acura, you, you, <laughs> does Acura give you all road car to drive uh, on the regular road? What do you all drive on the regular road uh, when, you're, when you're not racing? MDX. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yep, same. I think everybody picked the MDX. We, nice. We all, love it. all right. Hey, guys, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us here on Cooks and Cars. Thanks, all right, thank you. All right. That was awesome, man. I love having those guys on and uh, I'd love the, you know, the sportsmanship. It's kind of a, it's a joke, but there's kind of serious, you know, like, oh, hey. no, 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 there's, there's some <laughs> serious competition going there. There's no question about like, it. Like, Hey, we're not messing around. And actually you, you drove the Acura um, in today, which is a beautiful car. So talk about that car a little bit. My MDX? No, no. <laughs> the, the car you drove in today. No, really. I mean, um, I'm actually pretty amazed um, by it. You know, my first car was an Acura Integra um, back in the day. Um, it was right when they came out with the VTEC technology. Um, and so I've always been kind of an Acura fan, and I've always loved the retro NSXs. Um, and so uh, I have now a – it's a, a 2017 model NSX. Um, and really, I've, I've absolutely been amazed um, by what the car is capable of, you know, comparing it to all of the European uh, sports cars. Um, there's just an, an, an element of drivability and handling and um, performance that this car has, not to mention, you know, the, the technology in there is good. Um, it, it, it really... Um, you know, I've, I've truly been blown away by how impressive um, of a car that that it really is. And this is really my first time spending any period of time in it. Um, it came out, I think, uh, or I don't know, my first experience in one was like, I, was, I remember being in the hospital with my wife when my son was, my, my our youngest was born. So that was literally two years ago. And my buddy who owns an Acura store picked me up in one and we drove it around Sandy Springs. And I was, you know, doing like a hundred miles an hour on a 25 mile an hour road. Yeah. And I was amazed by how good the car is, but you know, Acura clearly, I mean, they're into racing. You can see with Ricky and Juan Pablo, I mean, they, they know, you know, how to build a car and, and the technology and it's, it's a hybrid and it's, you know, I mean, I don't even know half the things that go into it, but it's really, <laughs> you know, aside from being beautiful, it's an impressive machine. So I have to ask, it is on your website, obviously for sale. Yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. keeping it though? Yeah. Well, I'll keep it, you know, I'll keep driving it until someone buys it. You know, you can always tell which one I'm driving. Cause you know, the, the price may be on the higher side, side of things. You want to and then once I find something that I'd rather get into, I'll <laughs> lower the price to a more reasonable price. And then, um, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. The car, I mean, the car really is fantastic. I think, you know, I, I don't good. think it gets as much good publicity as it should. All right. Great show today. This is episode number nine. You can follow us on cooksandcars.com. Again, interacting with us on Facebook and YouTube. You can also on our social media side, uh, go to uh, cooksandcars.com where you get Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all that great stuff. And please subscribe because that does help. I know we're up to 10 
people on our YouTube. Uh, you know, it'll help it'll, if you promote it a little bit. You know, nobody, nobody, know, no, nobody knows about it. We're promoting it. it. Okay. We're right. promoting it. Right. just started right. this week. Now that we actually. don't have technical difficulties anymore, oh gosh, you know, we're getting so real bad. guests on. It's like a real show now. So, yeah. like, you know, now we can actually, you know, promote it and see and get some feedback from our listeners. That's the, that's the best thing. I mean, the best shows have really come when people have sent in and said, talk about this, do this. I have a question about that. Well, and that's really the whole purpose. Well, that's why I want to start it th- th- this way is because I'd love to take calls eventually even and, and do all that and get that hooked up. But this was the best way to do that right now as we're in the beginning stages here. But uh, we'll, you know, grow this show uh, with you guys uh, coming, coming along and make sure you spread the word yourself. If you go to car show, tell people about it and let them know you got a, a guy that's a big car guy or a foodie guy and they want to talk cooking here's the best spot to do that and and props to big green egg foodie uh shannon for coming on and and Thank saying you. hey if you want to cook alongside me we can do it live and all that stuff that is a great thing that's a great tool if you're new into big green egg and just got that walk she'll help you out there's no doubt all right for adam merlin i'm rob D'Amico, and our uh guys back at the shop ryan our executive producer here sutton as well sitting with us in here in studio we appreciate you guys li- listening and thank you for watching. Uh, We'll see you next week right here on Cooks and Cars.